Thanks for joining me for this episode of Cavalry A through Z. There's a lot to cover in this one, so let's get learning. First, let's take a look at Bevel and Boolean, because those are the easiest ones. So for the Boolean, it's basically letting you either add or subtract shapes from each other. So here we have two shapes. One is the body and one is the cutter. The Boolean is connected to the body shape as a deformer. And in here, we place our cutter and set it to subtract. And so now when we turn this on, and we'll go ahead and turn off the cutter visibility, you see that it just kind of deletes that part of the shape. And so if we move the cutter around, you can see that the hole is just wherever that shape would be. The bevel is also connected to the body as a deformer. And when we turn that on, we see it just kind of like softens all the shapes. Inside the bevel, there's some options where you can change like how intense it is. And you can see if you go real far, it starts to get kind of weird. Um, and then you can also change it from fillet to chamfer if you want those straight edges. This is the comp where I built the character for the main piece. But here, if we look at the body, it's the same thing that I just showed you. And so basically what I did is I have my cutter, but on my cutter, I've also got a noise on the position. And I also have a noise on the number of sides. And so what this does is if we go back to the main thing, we see all these little dudes have kind of different shaped bodies. And all that is because the cutter shape is being moved horizontally to give it a different position. And then the number of sides is also changing. So the shape of the cut is different. By the way, let me know what you think a good name for these dudes is in the comments below. Okay, so now we're gonna shift gears and talk about the behavior mixer. As sort of a visual example of how this works, if I just play this scene, you can see this guy, he's kind of got his little motions, he's doing some things, he's just kind of standing there, chilling. And here I have this main control, it's just an animation control, connected to some of the other attributes that I'll show you in a second. And so with this setup, using the behavior mixers, as I move this slider, you can see that his behavior changes, right? So if we go all the way, he gets kind of crazy and he's running real fast. In the middle, he's just kind of jogging. And then down here, he's just staying still. And so all of this is dynamic and procedurally generated. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so here I've got everything turned off except for just the body. So if we open this up, we can see we have a couple of nulls that are connected to the rubber hoses for the neck and the legs. We have the cutter that we just talked about to make the body shape. Down here, we have some deformers, so the gradient, the bevel, and the boolean. But the main thing is this behavior mixer. Inside of this behavior mixer, we have an oscillator, and we also have a noise as two separate inputs. Each behavior has a spot for an input, whether or not it's enabled, what the strength is, and what the blend mode is. So basically what it's doing is it's taking the values from these two inputs and mixing them together. And you can see that I've got keyframes on frame zero and frame one, and I've got those connected to this animation control that I showed you earlier. So for now, I'm gonna turn that off, and we see that on frame zero, the oscillator has a strength of 10, and the noise has a strength of 50. And then on frame one, the oscillator has a strength of 75, and the noise has a strength of 200. And so with the animation control connected to these, when I turn it on, I can blend between those values. And so if we play this again, we see that this is his idle animation all the way at zero. And then we can move it all the way up here to its extreme amount. And so it gets faster. One thing to note is that behavior mixers don't work as deformers. They actually create a value that then goes into something else. So if we click on this little purple arrow, we see that we have the oscillator input and the noise input. And then this behavior mixer is connected to the body position. So it's affecting both X and Y and it's connected to the body rotation. And so basically the behavior mixer just kind of allows you to seamlessly move between different styles of movement or values, which helps you to blend like randomized things with more controlled things. So now let's also check out the head because it's kind of set up the same way. Here we have a behavior mixer. It also has an oscillator and a noise and keyframes on zero and one. And I also have keyframes on zero and one for the pivot. If we open up our control again, we can see that the head actually in the idle state is much closer to the body and in the running state, it's further away. And this animation is on the pivot because I wanted the head to kind of move in sync with the body. So the head origin point is actually down here. And so I moved the pivot to increase the height. So let's turn on these other layers to go through them real quick. Let's take a look at this ball that follows this dude's head. So I have a shape, which is just a circle, you can see it here, and its position is connected to the head's position, 
and the rotation is also connected to that same head behavior mixer. So it kind of moves in sync with the head, but I've also put a spring on it. So as it's moving, it'll kind of automatically add a springy, sort of like laggy and bouncy behavior to it as it's moving. It's not super noticeable with this animation because it kind of moves quickly, but it does add just a little bit of secondary animation. And so you can see here that the head is actually a custom shape, so it's just easier to work with that way. But inside of this head folder, we have the original head shape, and that head shape has a Boolean where I have connected the eyes and the head ball. So the head ball acts as part of the head, and that's why it's here and, and it shares the same gradient and the same stroke and everything. Um, even though it's technically a separate shape. And so that plus the eyes are set to this add instead of subtract, which is what the body was. The neck and legs of this guy are rubber hoses, which I will go into more detail when we get to R. For the feet, I have a null. And inside of the null, I have two feet. And on the right foot, you can see, as with everything else, I have two keyframes, right, on zero and one, basically setting the position horizontally. I've connected this oscillator to the left foot, the right foot, and the null that's holding everything together. So as the null is rotating, the feet also kind of rotate with it as well. And what I did is with this right foot, I entered the movement keyframes, and then instead of doing the same thing with the left foot, I just sent this position to the left foot, and I added an expression of times negative one, so it moves the opposite direction. I also took the X position of this right foot put it through a number range, which is then connected to this oscillator's strength. So as the foot is moving horizontally, that's actually what turns on the oscillation. And because I'm working with it on the strength, that's why when the feet are closer together, it's not oscillating as much. But the further apart they get, the stronger that oscillator runs. So it's getting crazier and faster. And that's the basics of how this character was created. Here I have another example of the behavior mixer. I think it's a little bit simpler, there's a little less going on, um, so maybe it's a little bit easier to understand. So here I've created a basic joystick rig, where as this circle moves around, it moves around the whole head and neck and everything like that. In the middle I have this little thing that moving it back and forth changes the rotation of the creature's head. In this horizontal behavior mixer, we see that similarly to the last one, I have an oscillator and I also have a value. And this value, the input to that, is the joystick's X position. And so what I'm doing with this one is it's blending between an oscillation back and forth to something that's more controlled and keyframed. And so this way you can use a joystick rig to have your characters look where they need to look, but you can also blend in some randomness or oscillation or something else to kind of give it a more natural feeling. And so here, instead of just doing an animation control, I've actually just keyframed the strength values. So you can see here we start with everything on zero, and then we move up to frame 20 or 19, and now the oscillator is at 80, and the joystick value is still at zero. So right now the only thing affecting the horizontal position is the oscillator. And then we see here, as the oscillator strength is animating down, I'm slowly animating up the joystick's value. And so you can kind of see as this circle is moving in this beginning part, the head doesn't really care. It's just going back and forth. But then once we hit this keyframe, it starts to favor where the joystick is going more. And then by the time we get to here, the oscillator's off, and so now it's only focusing on where the joystick is. For the rotation here, it's basically the same setup, where I have the rotation input of this little lever and an oscillator. And so with this animation, I'm really only animating the oscillator. And so technically, to get this exact animation, I don't need a behavior mixer. I could have just put an oscillator in and animated its strength. However, having it set up this way, means that here, where the oscillator strength is at zero, I could animate this and have specific control over how it's rotated. So again, it's a good way to just mix specific animation with more randomized procedural animation. All right, so back to this main animation. How do we tie everything together in an interesting way? So here, as these little creatures are moving, this is just a blend submesh position. In order to do that, I have three different duplicators with three different distributions, all with the same number of objects. And so we see here, I just use pink dots, and position one is this one, 
And then position two is a circle. And this one actually moves a little bit. And then position three is a random distribution. And then what I did to make things easier is this main duplicator, if we go in here, it's actually on a sub mesh distribution. And then the input shape is just this position one duplicator. I did this because if you blend the sub mesh of something with these complex characters, sometimes if you're on the wrong level, all the bits and pieces kind of move around and get a little bit crazy because it says, oh, there's like a hundred parts to each of these things versus looking at just a single point. And it also helps keep the orientation or the rotation of these creatures how I want it to be. So in the circle duplication, they're kind of moving around, but they're all facing up. Whereas sometimes if you would use a blend sub mesh position on this one, then they might all have sort of a different rotation. And so using a sub mesh distribution on a duplicator, you can use almost anything as that input shape and it'll just place your objects onto that shape. I do have a video that I've made previously that goes more in depth on that, and it shows you how to add things like noise to the position or using fall off to make things a little bit more organic and interesting during the transitions instead of sort of just a straight line going where it's going. Now, the coolest thing about this animation for me is that as each creature is moving, we can see that they all have sort of a different run movement. If they're moving a little bit, their legs are only moving a little bit. And if they have to move a long distance and they're moving faster, they're actually running faster. The secret sauce of this animation really comes down to using that animation control alongside of a velocity magnitude context. I know we're not in Vs yet, but we're gonna talk about it. So for this main animation, I just copy and pasted over the little man that I created in the other comp. And it has the main control, and it has the animation control that's connected to the behavior mixer's strength values. So if we go back to this comp, remember, at zero on the main control, at zero on the animation control, he's just standing there, right? At a little bit, he's moving a little bit, and at 100, he's going crazy. And so we have this whole range of how fast this character is running. So back in this main animation, what I have is a velocity magnitude context. This is a beta feature, so you might not have access to it yet, but it'll come out eventually. So what the velocity magnitude context does is it gets the speed information of an object based on its context. When I was setting this up, I put the velocity magnitude context into a string generator that was connected to a text layer that was inside of this little creature's group. What that allowed me to do was to play the animation and see roughly the speed values that these little creatures were generating as they were moving around. So then what I did, get rid of all that, now that I have that knowledge, I connect it into this number range. And so the source minimum is zero, and the source maximum, the highest number that I saw previously, was around 60. So that's my maximum. I have the value going in, the minimum is zero and the maximum is 100 here because the animation control goes from zero to 100. So the fastest speed I saw was 60, so the fastest one should be at 100 on the animation control. And so now this number range is connected into the main group's animation control. So what that does now is for each individual index or context of these little creatures, it gets the speed value and then uses that to change the main controls value here. So it's a little bit complicated, but setting it up this way means that as these things are moving around, they will automatically animate in a way that looks consistent with how fast they're actually moving. And that's all done procedurally and dynamically. And I don't have to do that manually ever now that it's set up. So I can have these guys running anywhere, doing any animation I want, and the speeds will update as they should automatically. I know that was a lot to cover and I didn't get super in depth into anything. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. If you wanna see a more in-depth dive into any of these concepts, let me know, I can make another video. Thanks for joining me, see you next time.